in our case we want our fan just to move a little bit up and down so I'm going to put in a value of minus two and a half and positive two and a half so 2.5 to 2.5 and then we're just using our user input to go between these two values you see at the moment I'm moving my mouse hardly at all and it's going straight between these two values with hardly any transition so we need to use an expression value to reduce the extent at which um, our user input is giving values. We need to basically feed our relative value a much smaller value than it's currently receiving. So I'm just going to put here a divided by 100 so we should have a hundred times less input coming into our limit relative value. Okay so this is looking a lot better. I'm moving the mouse pretty much the extent of the screen and that's moving in between these two start and end values. So what I want to do now is take this over as a shortcut and use this for the rotation of our dial. So where is our dial? Here we go to the switch here and the one which we want to operate on is probably the X here. Now I'm a bit too far away from it at the moment so I'm just going to move the walk through camera a little bit closer. In fact it might be better just to use our perspective camera here so, just so we can get in nice and close. Okay, so I'm going to have a look in one of these rotation vectors again. Um, okay, so it's the Z rotation vector which we want to be using here. So I've connected this limit relative value up and you can see now as I'm moving the mouse up and down it is rotating this dial. Now this is exactly what we want but we don't want it to be happening all the time. We only want this rotation to occur when this switch is activated. So what I'm going to do now is disconnect it from here and delete this shortcut and let's go back to the logic and create some further logic so that this is only enabled once our switch is turned on. So the first thing we want to do is get an if channel from the channel list. Let's drag that in and also now what we want to do is take a shortcut from the value here which is basically telling us whether our switch is on or off. Now at the moment this is just called value which is a bit confusing because as you build um, more and more complex logic trees it becomes more important to label your channels because then you can see what's going on otherwise you can get lost quite easily. So let's um, call this uh, switch on question mark. So we know this is the state of our switch. So I've connected this up here and this is all going up to our dial rotation now and what I want to do now is take a shortcut from our limit relative value and now take it back over to the rotation for our switch again. And you'll see we'll have another problem here. You can see even though we've created this logic over here um, which should only enable this rotation when the switch is on, um, it's being called all the same. Now the problem with that is that we've just taken a shortcut from our limit relative value and so it's being called over by the rotation for our dial here. Um, now this isn't what we want to do and the solution to get around this is to copy this into another value and then we'll use that value for the rotation of our dial. So I'm going to go over to set value and we're going to set this value into another value here. Now this is another function of the set value channel. You can see as well as specifying a channel, uh, a value which you want it to set from inside it, what it can also do is take the value which you link to its first child link position and it can copy and paste that into all of the values you connect after it. So at the moment what's going to happen is as soon as this set value is called, it's going to copy this value here from our limit relative value and paste it into the child here. So we can now use this as the rotation for our dial. So delete that old shortcut and connect it up there. And so now if I put it in run mode you can see I'm moving the mouse up and down and nothing's happening. And As soon as I click and hold down on our switch you can see now it's working. As soon as I let go 
and disable the switch, the rotation is no longer occurring. So this is exactly what you want. All we need to do now is tune, uh, basically tune how much rotation is occurring and also we really want our switch to remain red whilst our switch is turned on. At the moment as soon as we move our mouse away from the switch it goes unread again um, even though it's still active and we're still rotating it. So let's now create some logic that makes our dial turn red either when the mouse is over it or when the switch status is 1. So let's first take a shortcut from our switch status value. So switch on value I've got a shortcut from that and taking it over to the material emissive vector for our dial. Now what we need is an expression value. So we've got our expression value here and we're going to link up the two of them to the expression value and double click our expression value and in here what I want to do is put A or B. Now that means if either of these values is one or greater it will then give a value of one. So let's link that up now to the emissive and see if that works. So you can see mouse over is working so as soon as we put our mouse over the switch it tells us this is the switch and it'll work so then when we put the left mouse up you can see even though the mouse is no longer over the object the emissive is still red on our dial because the stitch the switch status is at one. As soon as I let go and the switch is turned off it becomes unread again. So that's pretty much what we want with the switch. The next stage is linking the interface to the fan. Let's first focus on using the dial to speed up and slow down the fan. So let's go over to our logic we've created over here and the value which we're currently using for our rotation, let's rename that. So we can call this fan slash dial rotation. So we know what this value is now. So let's take a shortcut from this and let's try feeding this into the motion for our fans rotation. So at the moment we've got a we're using this loop relative value um, with a static value of 0 0.05 in here. If we replace that with our fans rotation we should be directly linking the rotation of our dial with the rotation speed of our fan. So let's now use our walkthrough camera to look through an angle where we can see both not going to be easy but uh, something like that kind of works so what I've done now is increase the dial to the top and you can see our fan is now stopped um, I'll try and move back a bit further there we go that views a bit better and as we bring the dial down the fan speed increases so this is now working, but it's the wrong way around. We'll now look at how envelopes can be used. So what I want to do now is use an envelope channel. Now an envelope channel is something we've seen briefly a few times, but we're going to look at it a bit more closely now. Now with the envelope channel, you have this envelope editor here. And the envelope editor is basically a 2D graph in which you can define the interpolation between different points you make. So with the envelope channel you can see it accepts a value as its child and what happens that value as its child is represented by one axis on this graph. Now the other axis on the graph you can define um, basically by putting points in wherever you like and by doing this you can create quite complex and interesting characteristics as the value changes. So let's start by adding some keys in our envelope editor. So if we click the new key button, let's start by adding a key at minus 2.5 minus and here we want to give an output value of 0 so that's fine and let's create another key at 2.5 and here we want to give an output value of 1. So let's now go and zoom in on our keys we've just created here and what you can see here is we have a linear interpolation between these two points but the great thing about the envelope editor is that you can use these tension, continuity and bias buttons on the left here to change the interpolation between points. See if I put my mouse over the tension point here and hold down my left button and move the mouse up and down you can see the interpolation curve is changing quite a lot. So 
by using a combination of these different uh, settings here you can really change the uh, interpolation behavior and get all sorts of interesting results so anyway I'm going to reset both of these and leave them as they are so let's now check this out and see how it works in the project so we're going to give it an input of our fan dial rotation and then the envelope is going to be the output which is going to be fed into our fan so if we now go and